Two things I always do whenever I set up a new cloud account, and that is make sure that root account is secure. I enable MFA, configure all of the security settings that the platform will give me. The second thing is alerts. I need to know how much is being spent on that account and make sure I'm not going over budget. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's just start off at Amazon Web Services. If you don't have an account for AWS, just go to aws.amazon.com. You're going to click on the button in the top right hand corner that says create an AWS account. Really, really simple. Just go through the form, complete it all, and then once you've done that, you will end up on the console homepage. The console homepage looks like this. I usually do a few different things when I set up my new account. First of all, a little hack. Whenever I set up a new account on AWS, I always label the name with the month and year at the end. So if you look at this one here, you can see that this account called AWS Cloud Lab 1022, I know that, that was set up in October 2022. Now, the reason I do that is that in October 2023, I know that that free tier is has been used, that can't be used anymore, so I can then just close this account and open another one. Then I am, the first thing I normally do is configure MFA, so let's just do that. I'm going to call this my iPhone, and I'm going to use the Authenticator app. So I'm going to enter the first code and the second code, uh, add MFA, that is done. I usually then set up an alias for my account, it's just easier than remembering the account number. Uh, and the alias I'm going to give this is the name of the account. The alias. Done. Next, I'm going to create a new user. The reason I do this is that this is the user that I will log into the console with and I will be using as part of all my labs. Once I've set up my account, I never really log back into the root account. The only time I do that is to either make changes to permissions or to delete the account altogether. So I'm just going to create a new user. And I'm going to actually add this to the end. This is just so I know what services have been enabled for this user. I'm going to attach a policy. I want this user account to have access to EC2. And also, I want it to be able to create network and stuff. So, VPC. So, full access. Next, create user. Okay, well, now that that's done, I'm going to go into account. I'm going to change some settings in here down under billing preferences. Enable this. So I want to receive the AWS free tier alerts. So that will tell me when I'm getting close to the end of my free tier. Email address, I could add a different email address, but if you don't, it's just going to add the default address on the account. So that's fine. The next bit, receive CloudWatch billing alerts. If that's not ticked in yours, then just tick that. So update that, that's done. The next thing I want to do is set up the CloudWatch alerts, the billing alerts, and make sure I'm being made aware of any huge costs put onto my Amazon account. So we'll do that in CloudWatch. We're going to create a new alarm. So click on in alarm. I'm going to click on create alarm. I want to select metric and choose billing. We're going to then choose total estimate charge. And I'm going to select USD. And then I'm going to click on select metric. You can leave this as default. The period six hours is, is fine. Amazon usually calculates charges every six hours, so that's perfect. I'm going to change this to greater than equal. So I want to set the maximum amount is, let's just say $50. And that's it, just hit next. On this page, we need to set up the notifications. So this is how we'll be notified. This will use the Amazon SNS service. So I'm just going to create a new topic. I'm just going to clear this. I'm going to call this AWS Cloud Lab 10. Billing alert. I'm going to send this to me and click on create topic. That is done. And then I'm going to click on next. The alarm name is going to be billing alarm. I'm going to go next. And then if you move down to the bottom, you can see create alarm. So you see at the very top, it says the billing alarm has been created. Let's just go back to alarm, click into all alarms, and you can see the alarm here. You can see this warning at the top. It won't actually send me emails until I've logged into my email and approved and accepted that. So let's just do that quickly. I'm going to click on confirm subscription. And done. So that is completed. So in terms of AWS, that is completed. So I've enabled MFA on my root account. I've created an alias. I created a user. I've set the permissions for the user so that user can only access EC2 and VPC. The next thing I did was to enable the free tier alerts. And then we created the CloudWatch alarm and then the SNS topic that will alert us 
whenever we have reached $50 charges. Moving on to GCP, we will do the exact same thing. Security on the account for GCP is handled by the Google account. So if you have a Gmail account, you need to go into the Google account and configure multi-factor authentication. Hopefully you have already done that. If you have not done that, you just need to click on your account at the top and then click on the manage Google account. Then under security, you will see there is an option here at the bottom just to run through all of the different things that you need to set up, such as two-factor authentication. You can also add a recovery email and recovery phone number. If you don't have a GCP cloud account created, it's very, very simple. Just go to cloud.google.com and then click on start free in the top. If you're logged into your browser as a Gmail account, it will just take you right in and run you through the GCP process. If not, then it will ask you to log into your Google account. When you actually get logged into GCP, you will be faced with this. So this is the console homepage for GCP. There's a few things that you need to get set up first before you can start building things. And that is a billing account and also a project. Because all of the security pieces is handled by the google.com account anyway, so we can skip all that bit and then we'll just get set up with our budgets and our email alerts. Very, very easy to do. Just go into billing. If you don't have a billing account set up at this point, then you are just going to get a white screen with the blue button that says set up billing account. So just click on that, add your details, your address and put in your card and then it runs through a verification and then that's pretty much it. It will just redirect you to this billing page. For budget and alerts, we just need to click on budget and alert on the left and we're going to click on create budget. I'm going to give this a name. Okay, this is all fine. I'm going to click on next, specified amount, I'm going to set this to £40, I'm going to go next. So this is the alerts you will get, so when you've reached 50%, so whenever it reaches £20, you're going to get an alert and then the same on 90% and the same on 100%. In terms of alerts, it will send notifications to the billing admins. So let's just finish this, click on finish and you can see the budget has been completed. The fact that you can see the billing page means that you have got the permissions to see billing, so you're probably the billing admin anyway. But if you wanna to check to make sure you are the billing admin, so just click on overview, and then we're gonna click on manage billing account. And on the right here, you will see my billing account. You can see here the billing account administrator. So you can see the email address for the person that will receive those notifications. In terms of GCP, that's it. That's all you really need to do. We move on to Azure. Again, Azure is the same principle in terms of GCP. Azure will use your Microsoft account. So if you have a Hotmail account, Outlook account, whatever, MFA and stuff like that account will be based on that. So again, hopefully you have configured MFA on that account. If you haven't, it's very simple to do. Again, top right hand corner, you're going to go into your account and you're going to click on my Microsoft account. And then down the page, you'll see under security. There is a security dashboard where you can change your password and you can add additional security options to your account. To get set up with Azure, it's very, very simple. Just go to azure.microsoft.com and click on start here. This will bring you through the Azure sign up page. Again, you just fill out a form, put in your card details, and then it brings you to the next page, which looks something like this. That just says you're ready to start with Azure. Once you click through here, you can click on go to Azure portal. That then takes you to this page. This is the quick start center, which is really good. It takes you through all these different steps that you can run through. Because MFA is part of the account, we can just skip right through this and put on some budget alerts on our subscriptions. So I'm going to do that. So just click up on the top here. And we're going to go into cost management and billing. Now I'm just going to go into cost management and I'm going to go into budget. Click on add. I'm going to call this Azure Lab budget. That's fine. I'm going to set 40 as the amount budget. So I'll click on next. I'm going to set this as the actual. So this will be the actual charge. I'm going to say once this reaches 90%, which will be 36 pounds, um, then it's going to send this email to this account. So just type in my account. Okay, default language thing and click create. And that's it, that's it done. Now that you've created all those cloud accounts, you're ready to get started. Even if you want to do some certifications, if you want to click on this video, this video will show you all of the free resources that you can use online that will help you get certified in any of these cloud platforms. So good luck. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.